go. It, you know, it, it, this is a place of a lot of firsts, um, uh, and, and what a perfect place to, to merge the greatest uh, emerging city in the world with the greatest emerging technology in the world. So three years is a lifetime in this industry, just like it's a lifetime for what you see in Dubai. I made my first trip here 15 years ago, and uh, I've made dozens and dozens and dozens of trips since then. I've lived here, uh, but it never ceases to amaze me, driving down Sheikh Zayed Road, to think back that it was only 15 years ago. There was only, what, four or five buildings. There was this building, Emirates Towers. Uh, the DIFC had just been built. It was just the arch, really, and then the other ones were all construction. You'd go into the DIFC, there'd be dust everywhere on the floor. Uh, nobody really knew where your offices were. There, there was no numbers on the offices. If you wanted to stay in a hotel, you know, you had kind of the deuce it. I think the Meridian by the airport, a couple other choices. Um, if you wanted to go to the gym, wearing shorts was kind of a little bit unusual. Um, you were just getting to the point where men and women were, were not segregated. Uh, you, you know, it was, it was almost the way, uh, probably the way Saudi Arabia will be a few years from now. Um, you, you know, so, so re really incredible changes in just a short time. Uh, profound, and we've seen that a lot with this space. I've been fortunate enough to be very early adopter in this space as well. So, what I'll, I think I'll do is take a little bit of that perspective from from uh, this very very fast moving space, and I'm going to talk about. I think the title of my talk is uh, you know five five common mistakes blockchain executives should avoid. Um, so I'll get right into it. <clears throat> the uh, the first one, I think, is really asking, should we use blockchain or not? Uh, it's, it's a hype word now and a buzzword now, and, and I always joke that people are putting, you know, they're talking about blockchain flowers and blockchain cups and blockchain tables and blockchain dog training and blockchain everything. And really what we see is just a lot of rehashing of old bad ideas that didn't really take off with the old internet models or people who were failed entrepreneurs in other areas and they figure if you add the word blockchain, maybe you'll get some financing or maybe you can take a mediocre idea and get a little bit more traction with it. But one of the first questions to really ask is, do we need a blockchain for this? And that really helps solidify whether it's a good idea or not. Uh, you know, at least from a blockchain perspective. Um, is it serving a need? A lot of times you have solutions in search of a problem in this space. Uh, another area that is important to look at is development. Uh, you, you know, thinking about how much development effort is behind your blockchain venture is very, very key. Uh, you know, having a, a good idea I, that and, 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 and uh, you know, 10 dirhams will get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. You know, good ideas are a dime of a dozen. It's very, very easy to make good ideas. And, and some of these ideas aren't even very good ideas. They're just sort of pretty generic ideas with the word blockchain tagged at the beginning or the end. Uh, really, you need a fundamental, uh, solid development base. And that's very, very hard these days for startups, for anyone. Uh, it's very hard to find developers. There's very few qualified developers. You need somebody who uh, ideally really at the very basic level, first of all, understands technology, understands C++ and the, the, the computer languages that are used for the primary basis that run the rails of the most successful blockchains. Uh, but you also need somebody who understands cryptography. You need somebody who understands uh, you know, deep layers of security and the things that go in into this whole, uh, the whole process. Uh, so that brings me to the, to the, next, the next item is security. Uh, security should not be underestimated. We, at events like this, we talk about all of the great, event, the great advantages of blockchain technology, and they are significant. I believe it's going to change the world. Uh, as you may have seen on my bio, I founded the first full service investment firm on the internet back in 1994. One of the first investment firms of any kind on the internet. So I've seen this. I've seen this movie played out before. I've seen it when I started investing in Dubai 15 years ago. I've seen it on the internet. I've seen it in other markets. I think this is just as significant as Dubai, just as significant as the internet itself. It's a very, very big deal that's going to change the world as we know it. But it has drawbacks. It has drawbacks, and one of them is security. Uh, security is very significant. When you have a true blockchain, and there's 
what I call maybe fake blockchains, uh, you know, some of these permissioned blockchains or uh, you know, captive blockchains are, are, are really, <laughs> well, uh, you'll like what I'm going to say next. I, they're really notepad uh, is what they are. You, know, you have notepad. Um, and, and Notepad is a program that you get for free on your, on, your, on, your, uh, on your computer, and really that's all they are. If you have a blockchain that can be editable, it's not a blockchain at all. But if you have a real blockchain, then uh, with that comes all kinds of advantage, all of these exciting things that we're talking about in the world. But you have significant security issues. If you have a token or a coin, which most blockchain applications have some sort of thing of value, or even if it's data or something of value, uh, if it's worth anything, whether it's um, frequent flyer mile points or coins or tokens or real estate or venture capital tokens or whatever, if it has value, it's going to be attacked. And if it has significant value, if you have a business plan that intends to do anything of any significance and it works and you're fortunate enough to have it worked, it will be attacked very, very, very severely. And so security is something that I think is underestimated uh, quite a bit. Uh, the, the next point I would say is, kind of ties in with the first one, which is, which is this uh, you know, kind of hype uh, cycle. You know, to, to be aware of the hype and really ask the hard questions behind, you know, why are we doing this? Do we need a blockchain? Is this, is this just a fancy database? Or is this something that really is using this technology to its fullest potential? And with that, I would say uh, both you know, avoid the temptation to get sucked into the hype, but also don't be afraid to think big. This is very transformative. And some of the greatest applications that we see in this space are things that we can't even conceive of yet. Uh, when we were all excited about email, I remember demoing email to a client and I showed them how in an instant you could send a, a note from Massachusetts to Kansas and the person would get it and they'd be able to respond how superior it was to a letter or a fax. Uh, well, in those days we never conceived of, of drones that would be able to stream uh, video footage to your uh, mobile phone. Um, we didn't even conceive of Wi-Fi. Uh, the, the, the number of people in this room who have used uh, you know, Wi-Fi just today for all kinds of things, from checking flights to your hotel reservations, it's, it's really significant. And if we think of ledgers, if I were to ask you, how many times do you think you interacted with a ledger today? Just off the top of your head, you might say, oh, I don't know, a few times, four times, five times. It's really hundreds, hundreds of times. There's a ledger that represents that you're allowed to be here. Mo has a ledger that says you're an authorized attendee of this conference. You paid your registration fee. There's a ledger that says that Mo is authorized to be in this room that, with the Burj Al Arab, uh, where you park, how you get here. If you took Uber, there's a, Uber has multiple ledgers. They have a ledger that says you're really a customer, where you're going, that the driver's really authorized, that your credit card really works. In turn, that is backed up by other ledgers. Your credit card company has a ledger that says whether you, you, you have paid your credit card bill or not, and on and on and on and on. In our daily life, they are, they are so pervasive that it is the very reality of how the world works. It is all backed by ledgers, and all of those ledgers require a statement of truth. That's, that's all they are. It's saying, what is true? Is Mo really authorized to have this conference here? Am I really authorized to be a speaker here? Is this building really authorized to own this land? And, and are, they, are they authorized to have hotel rooms? And do the keys work? And, and do you really have the money that you think you have in your bank account? And does your boss really have what your boss thinks they have? Uh, people make billions of dollars. I'm always intrigued by, like I come from the private equity and, and I've worked with a lot of hedge funds and I'm intrigued by the, as a financial guy, of course, I'm intrigued by the, you know, these hedge fund managers. Every year or two, somebody will make a billion dollars in one day. You know, people like John Paulson and Dan Ock and, and George Soros who've had billion dollar days. All that is is a ledger entry. That number of profound, uh, life-transforming money, it really just comes down to a ledger that says, this money is in this account at Bank of America and now it's at this account at Citigroup. So ledgers uh, shape the fabric of our world. There are wars that are fought over ledgers. And we have now created a better ledger. And that's very, very, very significant. Uh, the last point, you know, the fifth point, maybe the most important, uh, is really you know, what blockchain do you use? I don't want to pick on anybody. I'm, and I, I flew in last night, so I had some things to take care of this morning. So I, I, I hope uh, I, I 
uh, I hope I'm not picking on any, anybody previously, but if I hear the word uh, blockchain agnostic, I think it's kind of like saying I'm a, I'm a tech developer, but I'm programming agnostic. Oh, I'm going to make an iPhone app. Well, how are you going to program it? I don't know. C++, Java, HTML, something. I don't know. You know blockchain agnostic is, it, you know, it's, it's like saying I'm going to go into real estate. You know, what is it, commercial or, or, or residential? I don't know. Somewhere. Dubai, Boston, Nebraska, Iowa, Bangladesh, somewhere. I don't know. I mean, you'd think that was kind of ridiculous, wouldn't you? I think it's kind of ridiculous if you go into blockchain and you don't know what blockchain. It's very, very significant. And when, you, when people use the word blockchain as if it's this, this uh, you know, one word that, that encompasses everything, it's not. It's not like the internet. There are, there are really, really significant differences between the strength of different chains. And it's the entire fundamental point of these ledgers when you have a ledger which is a statement of truth. Is it really true? And if it's not, then the whole thing is worthless. The entire, the entire concept is worthless. A business idea based on this technology is only as good as its chain. So one point that I would say with that is uh, to not discount the strongest chains. Uh, if you're looking for something like a smart contract app, you know, I would definitely look at Ethereum. Also, now with the price, Bitcoin is not as much of a dirty word or scary word as it, is, as it was maybe a year ago. Uh, because people tend to jump on the bandwagon with the price. But from forgetting about the price for a moment, uh, Bitcoin by far is the most uh, strong chain. We have a conference here, we're talking about blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. W what blockchain works? And Bitcoin, that's the blockchain that works. That's by far, if, if you, you have these, these, these uh, you know, pie in the sky ideas of groups saying, well, we're gonna go uh, public with our launch of our blockchain in a year. 2018, we'll have our blockchain. Oh, great. You know what that means? That means by 2026, you will have caught up to where Bitcoin is today. You need eight years, and Bitcoin has been attacked and attacked and attacked, and it's seen the problems and trials, and there are very, very smart people who have put hundreds and thousands of hours. There are 400 different contributors, and I think 4,500 different commits, you know, there's thousands and thousands of hours of, uh, that has gone into testing it and making sure that this statement of truth really is a statement of truth. Because it's easy, any, any fool can create a blockchain. But, and it may work even, but when, when the truth will, will come out when that uh, chain gets attacked, or when there's a crisis, like we saw with Ethereum where we had the DAO, uh, Decentralized Autonomous Organization came, and there was, uh, there was sort of a crisis because somebody attacked it. It wasn't really a hack. It was more of a, like, taking advantage of the contract in a way that no one intended. And so Ethereum had a decision. They said, do we, uh, do we make a fork and revert the money back to the way that people intended? Or do we let this, ha this attacker, some people call hacker, do we let them take the money? Well, that was a, a, a tough decision. I was actually of this, the minority opinion where I said you, you, a statement of truth needs to be a statement of truth. Uh, that's the value of a blockchain. It's not a statement of what we wish was true. It's a statement of what is actually true. So your blockchain apps will face attack. Uh, they may face crisis. When we, there, there's going to be wars in the world. There's going to be terrorist incidents. There's going to be all kinds of things. Even if your blockchain is technically secure, you may have social pressures and legal pressures and other pressures that will attack your chain. So having a very, very strong chain is, is key. And I would strongly recommend to not uh, ignore Bitcoin from that. There, at the very, very least, there are powerful lessons that can be learned from Bitcoin. At the best, some of these things like Rootstock, for example, which combines uh, the technology of Ethereum with the strength of the Bitcoin chain, and there's other things, counterparty and the omni layer and other ways where you can actually use this strongest chain, the most attacked chain, the most resilient chain, and the most independent chain. Uh, you can use that uh, for these other apps, some of these more exciting, uh, you know, broader blockchain apps. So I definitely recommend uh, you, you know, taking a look at the Bitcoin blockchain and not forgetting, you know, there is no blockchain white paper. You know, there is nobody who invented block, blockchain without Bitcoin. Uh, you know, the, the blockchain white paper is the Bitcoin white paper. And uh, I think that it is, it is a big mistake 
uh, for anyone to, to not do that. And if you think about it, what is the logic behind it? There isn't really any logical reason behind it. The only reason really is because of marketing. People say, well, I don't know if I want to be associated with Bitcoin because way back, you know, five years ago or something, which is a, it's like 50 years in, in blockchain time, uh, it was associated with drugs and things like that. But, you know, of course all currencies are. You know, the US dollar is a strong currency. It's also by far uh, the, the strongest currency for drug dealers and money launderers and terrorist financing uh, by a factor of a lot. Uh, compared to Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, really, you, you wouldn't be wise to let marketing dictate technology. So, so those are, the, those are the, the main points, you know, having strong development, uh, watching out for the hype cycles, looking at what we really need a blockchain for, uh, delving deep into security, and thinking hard and long about what the strongest chain is and why we have this chain. And those are just a few of many things that can be done that are best practices as we emerge into this very, very exciting and transformative time that I think we're, we're all going to be very excited to, to be here, even if you weren't here at the first event that I hosted that Mo mentioned and, and Noah was kind enough to mention earlier. Uh, you're still going to be able to look back at this moment and say, wow, I was at Mo's conference. I was here when history was being made. It's, uh, you know, it's really profound, and I'm, I'm really thankful to be part of it. So thank you.